Did you know thousands of Google Cloud websites are vulnerable right now? Well, that nightmare is a reality for thousands of websites right now. A groundbreaking new HTTP request smuggling vulnerability has left countless Google Cloud platforms exposed and the clock is ticking. But how is this possible? Let's find out. In this video, we will explore the shock and discovery that thousands of Google Cloud websites are currently vulnerable. If you think your data is safe on the cloud, you might want to think again. Let's dive into the details. Our story begins with a group of talented hackers and security researchers who stumbled upon something extraordinary. Paolo Arnolfo, Guillermo Gregorio, and a research known only as Medusa were discussing the supposed security benefits of cloud hosting when they made a startling discovery. On the very same day, they uncovered a powerful new HTTP request smuggling vector that affected thousands of Google Cloud hosted websites. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is HTTP request smuggling? Well, let's break it down. HTTP request smuggling is a technique that allows attackers to interfere with how a website processes sequences of HTTP requests. It's like sneaking a Trojan horse past the gates of Troy, but in this case, the horse is a malicious request and Troy is your web application. Traditionally, HTTP request smuggling vulnerabilities arise when front-end and back-end servers interpret request boundaries differently. This discrepancy creates a gap that attackers can exploit to inject malicious requests, potentially bypassing security controls or stealing sensitive data. But the vulnerability our intrepid researchers discovered takes this concept to a whole new level. They have dubbed it TE.0, a name that might not mean much to you now, but trust me, it's about to become infamous in cybersecurity circles. So, TE.0 is all about manipulating the transfer encoding header. In traditional HTTP request smuggling, attackers often rely on conflicts between the content length and transfer encoding headers, but TE.0 takes a different approach. Instead of relying on conflicts, TE.0 exploits a situation where the backend server ignores the transfer encoding header entirely, treating it as if it doesn't exist. Hence the dot zero in its name. This subtle difference opens up a whole new world of possibilities for attackers, allowing them to craft requests that slip past front end defenses undetected. But here's where it gets really interesting and alarming. The researchers discovered that this vulnerability wasn't just affecting a handful of websites. No, it was impacting thousands of Google Cloud hosted websites that were using their load balancer. We're not talking about some obscure host and service or a niche cloud provider. This is Google Cloud, one of the biggest players in the cloud computing game. The scale of this vulnerability is staggering, potentially affecting businesses and organizations of all sizes across the globe. But the rabbit hole goes even deeper. Due to the widespread use of the Google Cloud Platform Load Balancer and the multiple tech stacks connected to it, the researchers found they could compromise a vast array of services. This included Identity Aware Proxy, or IAP, a critical component in Google's Zero Trust security model. For those unfamiliar with IAP, it's designed to be a robust gatekeeper, ensuring that only authenticated and authorized users can access protected resources. It's supposed to be an additional layer of security, verifying every user's identity regardless of their location. But with this TE.0 vulnerability, that gatekeeper can be bypassed, leaving the digital castle doors wide open. The researchers' findings were shocking. They achieved critical impact, meaning they could potentially gain unauthorized access or control for virtually every vulnerable host they manually inspected. It's like finding a master key that unlocks thousands of doors, each leading to sensitive data and systems. Let's walk through a proof of concept to understand how this TE.0 attack works in practice. Imagine we have a vulnerable website hosted on Google Cloud. An attacker could craft a request that looks something like this. Now, this might look like a bunch of technical gibberish to some of you, but let me break it down. The attacker is sending a request that includes a transfer encoding header set to chunked. This is perfectly valid in HTTP 1.1, but the backend server will ignore this header completely. The 50 you see there tells the front end server that the next chunk of data is 80 bytes long, 
but the backend server, ignoring the transfer encoding header, sees this as part of the request body. This means the attacker can inject a completely separate GET request to their own server. When this request is sent multiple times, it can effectively redirect live users to the attacker's server. And here's where it gets really scary. This redirection can also send along the user's session tokens. In other words, the attacker can perform a mass zero-click account takeover. However, the implications of this vulnerability go far beyond just redirecting users. The researchers found that they could exploit this technique to bypass Google's identity-aware proxy authentication. Remember, IAP is supposed to be a cornerstone of Google's zero-trust security model. It's designed to ensure that only authenticated and authorized users can access protected resources. By exploiting the TE.0 vulnerability, attackers can potentially bypass IAP entirely, rendering this crucial security measure ineffective. The researchers scanned broadly for this new smuggling payload and received thousands of hits from their bug bounty program alone. And remember, these were just the sites they were legally allowed to test. The actual number of vulnerable sites could be much, much higher. What's particularly interesting is that not all Google Cloud hosts were vulnerable. The issue specifically affected those configured to default HTTP 1.1 instead of HTTP 2. While many modern websites have moved to HTTP 2 for its improved performance and security features, a significant number were still defaulting to the older protocol. Thousands, in fact. Let's break down how an attacker could capture other users' requests using this vulnerability. Imagine a blog site where users could post comments. An attacker could craft a specifically formed request that starts a comment submission but doesn't finish it. When the next user's request comes in, it gets appended to the attacker's unfinished comment and gets posted to the blog. This might sound like a minor issue, but think about what could be in that captured request. It could contain session tokens, allowing the attacker to hijack the user's session. It might include sensitive personal information or even payment details. The attacker has essentially turned the vulnerable website into a phishing net, capturing whatever sensitive data happens to swim by. But the potential for abuse doesn't stop there. This vulnerability can also be leveraged to exploit reflected XSS or cross-site scripting in a particularly nasty way. Normally, exploiting reflected XSS requires some level of user interaction. You need to trick the user into clicking a malicious link, for example. But with this request smuggling vulnerability, an attacker can inject their XSS payload without any user interaction at all. Here is how it works. The attacker smuggles a request containing an XSS payload. The next user's request that hits the backend server gets this payload injected into it. From the user's perspective, they've just made a normal request to the website, but suddenly, they are getting hit with an XSS attack. This technique is particularly powerful because it allows attackers to exploit XSS vulnerabilities in parts of the request that are typically hard to control, like HTTP headers. An attacker could, for example, inject an XSS payload into the user agent header, something that would be very difficult to do in a traditional XSS attack. But wait, there is more. This vulnerability can also be used to turn an on-site redirect into an open redirect. Many websites perform on-site redirects where they redirect from one URL to another within the same site. This is generally considered safe. However, with this request smuggling vulnerability, an attacker can manipulate these redirects to send users to external, potentially malicious sites. Here's a scenario. A user requests a JavaScript file that's included in a page on the website. The attacker has smuggled a request that triggers a redirect. When the user's request for the JavaScript file hits the backend, it gets this redirect response instead. Suddenly, instead of loading a script from the website they trust, the user's browser is pulling code from an attacker-controlled site. This gives the attacker the ability to execute arbitrary JavaScript in the context of the victim site, potentially leading to complete compromise of the user's session. Now, you might be wondering, how did Google respond to all this? Well, the researchers reported the vulnerability to Google, but the process wasn't entirely smooth sailing. Initially, Google couldn't reproduce the issue and close the report. However, the researchers persisted providing more evidence and asking Google to reconsider. Eventually, 
Google reopened the report and acknowledged that this was indeed an issue they had fixed after receiving a separate customer ticket. They rewarded the researchers with a bounty of $8,500 for their discovery. While this is a substantial sum, one could argue that it pales in comparison to the potential damage this vulnerability could have caused if it had fallen into the wrong hands. What are your thoughts on this vulnerability? Are you concerned about the security of cloud platforms? Let us know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.